Hey guys, this is Kathy with Main Street Moments and Beyond. I wanted to go through some of the stories we've been posting in our Facebook group, Main Street Moments and Beyond. So please join if you have not. And there's a lot of things happening right now in the world of Disney. One of the things I wanted to talk about was this article here from WDWNT or Walt Disney World News Today. And they're reporting that Epcot has cut some hours on some of their attractions. So if you have an upcoming trip to Epcot, this is something you might want to take note of. And it says right here, most of the impacted offerings will close an hour before the rest of the park starting February 23rd. So it's saying here all Kidcot locations are going to close at 8. They currently close at 9. The American Adventure, the last show will take place at 8.15. Right now it goes up through 9 o'clock. They're closing it 45 minutes early. Awesome Planet is closing an hour early. The Beauty and the Beast sing-along is going to close at 6. That's a brand new attraction, so I'm, I'm curious as to why that's happening. The only thing I can think of is maybe they're trying to reduce some of the crowd at closing time because when the park closes everybody's leaving at once and maybe if they close some of these attractions an hour early some people will start to leave an hour early. The Canada Far and Wide also a new attraction is going to be closing at 8 o'clock instead of 9 o'clock again an hour before the park closes. The Impressions de France operating from 6 30 to 8 um, is uh, going to be stopping an hour early right now it goes from 7 30 to 9 and the Reflections of China uh, closes at 8.10. Currently, it closes at 9. So all of those attractions starting February 23rd will be closing early, something you might want to take note of if you are heading into Epcot after February 23rd. I don't know if this is a permanent change, temporary, but like I said, I'm guessing this has to do with um, the crowds and, mon and managing those crowd levels when the park closes. Okay, another thing I wanted to show you guys, um, this is being reported on the Disney Parks blog. I highly recommend you check this regularly. A lot of great stories they have here, a lot of great information. It says, Walt Disney World Resort has photo ops to celebrate the 70th anniversary of Cinderella. If you haven't seen Cinderella in a while, I'm sure everybody has seen this movie at least once, but if you haven't seen it in a while, I suggest you re-watch it. I watched it the other night. It's a classic. It's a great movie. Um, you know, it's one of those timeless films that just never gets old. So as you know, this is the 70th anniversary of Cinderella. They have a lot of Cinderella merch in the parks right now. A new magic band, a lounge fly bag, desserts, all kinds of things. And now they have these awesome photo pass opportunities revolving around the story of Cinderella. And this is at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique at Disney Springs. And how cute is this where they have a little carriage and a little girl can go and get dressed up like her favorite princess and take a picture in front of the carriage. And look at, they bring in the fairy godmother right there. Isn't that cute? I just love that. Like she's casting her spell over the little girl. That's adorable. They also have, um, you can stand in front of a picture of the castle. And then this picture right here, I'm not sure what that is. I'm sure it's from one of the cartoons. Um, probably Cinderella, I'm guessing. And then they have a photo of you, or the little girl standing on Main Street. So that's really cute. I don't think they take you to Main Street. I think you're standing in front of a screen and they superimpose this is what I'm guessing because it's at the Disney Studio at Disney Springs. That's a great place to go to get some awesome pictures. They have props and it's a lot of fun. I haven't been there, but I plan on going soon. We're going to be staying at Disney for a couple days at the beginning of March and I'm definitely going to go to Disney Springs and check this out. Now next to Sleepy Hollow in the Magic Kingdom, park after dark they have some awesome photo ops as well and they have you holding cinderella slipper right in front of the castle this is a photo op i would love to get i think that's really really clever and lots of fun and they have this new um video here i'm going to just turn the volume down where they bring in a picture of you with your family and they have the little mice bring it in gus gus um i forgot his name i'm sorry but i know that's gus gus and they also have these great, the stepsisters are always behind the castle. They're amazing. So lots of new photo ops celebrating Cinderella coming to Disney Park. So definitely check that out. Looks like a lot of fun. Another story that's being featured on Walt Disney World News today is new pictures of the railroad track that is being built. I guess they're laying down some new track. It says here, 
um, getting some of our first opportunities to see long stretches of new track in place along the 1.5 mile loop. So here are some new tracks. So that's going to be a lot of fun when the railroad reopens, which I cannot wait for. I really miss the railroad. It was one of my favorite parts of uh, Magic Kingdom. And I guess they laid some new tracks, so they're going to have a new path that it's going to go on, which is going to be a lot of fun to see for there. It's kind of far away from the castle, so we'll see where that new path goes. But that looks amazing. I can't wait to check it out. And I'm not sure when that will be ready. I'm, I think I heard sometime next year. We'll have to wait till 2021, but I'm really excited for that too. This is a great website inside the Magic. They have a lot of great information. And this is a story I'm really excited about. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is going to have two storylines. Now, if you guys didn't know this, um, the rides at Disney World and the attractions always have a story behind them. There's always a narrative that the Imagineers work with to tell the story of the ride. They always work from a storyline. And this is the first ride, it says in this article, that will have two storylines. It's going to have a primary storyline and then a secondary, more subtle storyline. But they said, the story will be obvious. It'll be more subtle, but it will be obvious to the people riding the ride. It says this attraction actually has a B story. Walt Disney Imagineer Kevin Rafferty stated, first one ever that has a B story in addition to the A story. He says it's very clear and lots of fun. Everybody will see it. It's subtle, but you will see it. So I'm really excited about this ride. I think um, what happens is that you, you're like on a picnic with Mickey and Minnie and Goofy and Pluto, and um, you get taken off on a, you're kind of like in a cartoon. It's very colorful. It's a dark ride attraction. It's a trackless ride. And it's where the old great movie uh, ride was located, which I really, really am sad. That's not going to be there anymore. That was one of my favorite rides ever. It looks like a lot of fun. This is going to be a fan favorite, I'm sure. It's about time Mickey got his own ride, though, don't you think? Okay, Inside the Magic is also reporting, and this, this I posted in our Facebook group a few days ago, that they are making a live-action Rapunzel movie. I personally love the live-action movies. I know a lot of people don't. I don't know why. It, for me, it doesn't take away from the cartoon at all. I really enjoy them. I mean, Beauty and the Beast was amazing. Uh, the Cinderella movie was fantastic. Aladdin, I liked it. It wasn't my favorite of the live action films. I thought it was a little too long. Um, I think it could have been about 15 minutes shorter and I would have been happy. It's not one that I'll see again. Let's put it that way. I liked it, but it won't be one that I'm going to watch over and over. I like the cartoon better. But I do like the Beauty and the Beast live action. I've seen that about three times. The Cinderella one is really amazing. I don't mind them bringing these to life. A lot of people don't like it for some reason. But I'm really excited about this because um, Rapunzel or Tangled is one of my favorite movies that Disney has done. I love it. I've seen it a bunch of times. It has great music. I love Flynn Rider. He's a lot of fun. Or Eugene. And Rapunzel is a great character. I, I really like this cartoon. And I'm super excited about this news. Put in the comments, what do you think about these live action reboots? Do you love them? Hate them? Do you not care? I'm curious to know what you think. This is a story that's been going around. And again, um, this was posted about three weeks ago. I don't know if this is true or not, but it's been rumored that Zac Efron is going to uh, do play Jack Sparrow in the Pirates of the Caribbean reboots. I'm assuming they're going to be prequels. Um, because he is younger than Johnny Depp, and um, and he's a different person, obviously, playing this character. So I'm assuming it's going to be a prequel to the Caribbean movies that they did do. Um, this, to me, I hope this does not happen, because to me, Johnny Depp is Jack Sparrow, and I personally feel that if Zac Efron did this, I'm not saying he can't pull it off. I think Zac Efron is a good actor. He's very talented. But when you have an actor that plays such an iconic character, um, I mean, Johnny Depp's on the ride, you know, in California and here and, and, and also in Shanghai. And his image is on that ride. It says here, the reboot of the Pirates of the Caribbean is already in the process. And it looks like it will involve new characters as well as some of the original characters. According to some reports, Zac Efron is in talks of portraying Jack Sparrow. I personally would rather see a movie about the redheaded pirate. I think she needs her own movie. I think this is a franchise they can do a lot with. I don't think the franchise is dead at all. I think the franchise can live past Johnny Depp. 
But why not make another movie with Johnny Depp? I mean, the guy still looks good. He's a great actor. Why not do another movie with him? I don't understand why they have to bring in Zac Efron. I mean, they're doing another Indiana Jones with Harrison Ford. He's like 80 years old. So this is another great blog, Blog Mickey, that I follow. They really have a lot of um, great news. This posted um, a few weeks ago. I'm just going through my feed and my Facebook group right now. And they, I think, are in the parks every day because they're always posting really current articles. And it says here, even though this is a few weeks old, it's just because I'm going through my feed, like I said. The new Slinky Dog Dash rope drop procedure in effect today. This was posted, I'm trying to see a date here, February 15th. Okay, so it's not that old. It says here, Disney is constantly tweaking the rope drop procedure at Hollywood Studios, which I can understand because they have the Rise of the Resistance. Now they're going to have Mickey's Runaway Railway. They have two brand new rides in one park. And people are getting there 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning just to get on these rides. So they, it's a lot to manage. And it's not just a few people. It is hundreds of people that are showing up for these rides. Now, you know, right now at Rise of the Resistance, they have a boarding group procedure. We'll see what happens with that. Runaway Railway has a fast pass procedure, but people will go early to get on that ride and to wait in line. People will wait hours and hours and hours to get on a new ride. These popular rides do create a problem when these long lines get in the way of the flow of the traffic of the park. So it says here, as we made our way around Disney's Hollywood Studios pre-rope drop, we noticed that Disney had pre-filled the Slinky Dog Dash queue. Managers in the area that we spoke with said that this was a new procedure that they were trying this morning to manage the crowd flow of a Toy Story Land rope drop. We took a walk around the line this morning to give you a look at what you can expect if you rope drop Slinky Dog Dash when Disney pre-fills the queue. I've never heard of this pre-filling the queue. This is the, the Little Mermaid thing, and then Launch Bay is over here, I think, to the right. That is nuts. This is just to get on Slinky still, and Slinky Dog is over a year old. Look at this. Look at this line. I'm sorry. That's just something I would not do. Look at this. Well, this is President's Day. A lot of people are here for a vacation. It's a holiday weekend. It's a very crowded holiday weekend. And a lot of these people that are here haven't been to Disney in a while, or they might come once a year, and they want to go on this ride. Look at this. This is a look back at the masses as the rope drop, rope drop crowd stretches back. That is crazy. Look at that. That is nuts. I'd rather sit at a resort and just relax. Honestly, that to me is no fun. It's important to note that Disney is only pre-filling the queue for Slinky Dog Dash, not Aliens, or Toy Story Mania. If you want to ride either one of these attractions, you'll have to wait in the land rope uh, drop crowd that we documented above. Of course, if you want to ride Slinky and the pre-filled line is full already, you'll be rele relegated to the land rope drop crowd. Disney filled the line right up to the bridge at the attraction entrance. When the park officially opens, cast members will walk the crowd into the queue line any other morning. Pre-filling the queue seems to have managed some of the badness that inevitably occurs when a massive crowd of men, women, and children try to get to the front of whatever line they're in. We'll continue to keep an eye on the new rope drop procedure to see if it's adopted long term. And this last story we're going to talk about is again on WDW News Today. And I'm really excited about this. It is the new restaurant that is opening, the Regal Eagle Smokehouse, that is opening at Epcot. They're putting on the final touches of the decorations. And you can see they have like a big, um, I'll show you, they have like a big outdoor area here. It's blocked off with the bushes. They love to block off with these bushes. They're very effective. But here you have two smokers here. And you have a whole outdoor eating area, like big picnic tables, which I think is fantastic. I think this restaurant is going to be very popular very, because, you know, America is known for barbecue, great barbecue. If they have really good barbecue, it is going to be a slam dunk. And you're going to smell this food all around World Showcase. People are going to be flocking to this. They have two smokers. It is going to smell good. The food, there we go, I think is going to be amazing. It's like a big pit. I don't see any like umbrellas or anything, but they might add those. They might add some um, umbrellas over the tables. I would assume that they will because it does rain a lot in Florida and it can get very hot. Here's another shot of the smokers. So it's like an outdoor area. I'm not exactly sure how you'll order. I'm assuming you're going to order and walk up and order and get your order and take your, your order to a table, your number, and they bring it to you and they cook it right out here, I'm guessing. But they cook everything. Well, they cook all the smoked food right out here in the open. 
This is going to be a very busy place. I'm definitely going to go here. I love barbecue food. And it looks like the tables are arranged in a way where you are going to be sitting very close to other people unless they move these tables around. Oh, there's an umbrella right there. I see one. Okay, that's a good good thing. They need those umbrellas. And there's a sign they haven't uncovered yet. They're putting up all this bunting and decoration here. Very patriotic. I love that. And they got the, the benches here. So you're going to be sitting on benches, these picnic table style things. This is going to be a great way to meet other people, other families, because you're going to be sitting in very close proximity. It looks like a really casual, fun place. Um, I like that. I, th I think that's going to be a hit. I think that's going to be a huge hit. I don't know if they, here you go. So I'm right. You walk up and you order right here. They have the menus already up and you're going to walk up to this window, these two windows order. They probably give you a number or they just hand you the food right there. You know, they could just hand you the food while they're cooking all the recipes in the smokers and everything. And either they bring it to you or they hand it to you. But I think this is going to be a huge huge hit. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. This is Kathy from Main Street Moments and Beyond. Please join our Facebook group. Follow us here on YouTube. We have a lot of new content coming out. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the parks.